Hi everyone, welcome to the Dravid Show. I'm here at the Neo 4J Summit and uh, the Graph Summit is happening in London. Super excited to be with Michael Anger. Hello, Michael, Ravid. nice to be here. Uh, nice to be uh, chatting with you today. I'm super excited because you all made some amazing announcements today. Uh, yes. Before getting into the announcements, I would love for you to quickly introduce yourself. Tell us more about what do you do at Neo 4J. Yeah, actually I've been here with Neo 4J since the beginning for more than 15 years. Yeah. Uh, Back then, we were 10 people oh, wow. uh, starting a small startup, a really small startup. And I've been originally running a lot of the developer relations and community building efforts yep. at Neo4j, built Neo4j Labs as an incubator as well. And for the last two and a half years or so, I've moved to product management and I'm now running all the innovation projects at Neo4j. So it means looking at all the fantastic technology that's happening. Yeah. For the uh, last two years, I've been doing all the Gen AI initiatives at Neo4j. Love it. Uh, also, let's talk a little bit about uh, today's announcement. Yeah. Neo4j announced uh, 100 million Gen AI to push uh, and uh, the push into obviously the AI and the agentic systems. Uh, uh, Tell us a little more about that. How is it going to solve the problem for the enterprises out there who are stuck in the pilot projects? We've yeah. seen, you know, obviously the MIT reports, the Gartner reports, uh, and seen so many enterprises just getting stuck there. So tell us a little more about that. Yeah, I mean, if you if you talk to an LLM or look at an LLM, you have the probabilistic aspect, right? So you can provide LLMs with data, yeah. but pure data is not enough. You also need the connections. You need to have the context, right? So you basically need to, don't just put individual entities or individual items, but you also need to say, okay, this relates to this. This is in the context of this. And graphs are uniquely situated to, uh, to do this and to uh, enable people to build this. Uh, we want to create a graph intelligence platform, and that's where the $100 million come, come in, basically, to fund the development of this large platform that will enable all AI engineers and all AI developers to integrate this uh, contextual information into their systems as such, right? And there's lots of components of this platform, of this platform but uh, to make this happen, we need, basically, a large investment, uh, both on the product side, on building these things, but also as um, supporting startups with the startup program to basically finance and support startups that want to build uh, things on, on, on this graph platform as well. Fantastic. Uh, this is very helpful, uh, Michael. And kind of also curious uh, to learn because you announced something called Aura Agents. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> let's uh, get into, you know, what Aura Agents is. How is it going to help the larger uh, enterprises out there, but also the users who are looking to use it. Yeah, so with our agents, what we want to do, we really want to sim simplify agent creation and agent setup. Yep. Right? Usually you have your, your database, you might have an agent framework, you have like lots of moving bits and pieces, but we thought, why don't we make it much easier than that? Right. right? So you basically just define your agent, you provide a bunch of tools which have uh, queries, which have automatically uh, natural language require translation, but also things like vector search integrated. Yep. And then basically the set of tools with the agent instruction will be enabled and hosted on the Neo4j platform. So it runs also really close to the database, low yep. latency. And, and so from that perspective, then you get an agent, you switch it on, and then you can just integrate it into your larger system. And it has basically a natural language interface, but it's powered by all these uh, graph pattern matching Helpful. and traversal yeah. things uh, behind the scenes. And we take care of all the operability, uh, monitoring, um, you know, improving the React loop, picking the right LLM. Yep. You don't have to do any of this, but yep. you can basically, like most startups, they don't want to spend time on infrastructure. Uh, so they want true. to focus on the, on the business problem that they want to solve, right? Yeah. And that's, agents should help you to accelerate this so that you don't need days or weeks to build this kind of uh, things. but. Ideally, a few minutes, perhaps 10 minutes should be enough to get your first agent up and running. Love it. This is great. Uh, and I'm also kind of curious to know a little bit more about uh, when we talk about AI and agent tech, right? Uh, MCP is uh, also a very important topic that we yep. should be talking about. Uh, so tell us a little bit about how does the MCP server for Neo4j change the integration story for existing agents and the apps, uh, if, you, if we can dive a little bit yeah. into it. MCP as a technology is actually super powerful. Yes. Right? So uh, it enables you, or first of all, it reduces the integration effort for both users of services and providers of services, right? Yeah. So that's basically, and Tropica has done a really good job there bringing these kind of things together and creating this grassroots movement around MCP. True. The other, other big thing is, uh, I think that MCP enables uh, customers and, and users that you can take different data sources and uh, you basically um, federate them on the client. So you don't have to do basically server-side federation and data exactly. source integration, but you do it on a client. 
and with the smarts of the LLM, you can also deal with you know, unclear or less well-defined inputs and outputs. You can also transform data from one system to another before you pass it in uh, next. And uh, yep. the MCP server for Neo4j will enable uh, you to do this for, with a graph database, both in a data context, so the MCP server can be used to access your knowledge graph and integrate it into your agent application. Yep. It can also be used in a developer context when I'm building an application, I can use the MCP server to, for instance, uh, retrieve uh, the scheme of the database, uh, generate automatic GraphQL type definitions, pydentic classes. I can automatically validate my queries that I'm writing or that my yep. software uh, assistant is writing against a real database. I can pull data for integration and unit tests and all these kind of things. And nice. then the third thing is actually uh, also really interesting, which is memory, because uh, this MCP server is already able to take information from your conversation, from other sources, and turn it into graph shape structures. Very important. Yeah. Where you actually don't use it as a pure data level uh, information, but to kind of guide the decision and planning and reasoning process to make this better, to have basically a richer context uh, available, even over agent invocations uh, as well. Right? Love so, it. So you have actually already three users, and of course, because it's MCP, you can use it in Claude, you can use it in VS Code, you can right? use it in Copilot wherever OpenAI and with agent frameworks as well. So it's easy to take this MCP server and then plug in your knowledge graph into any of these systems as well. This is amazing and uh, you know, we know the power of MCP and now kind of coming up with new, uh, along with Neo4j, it just becomes much more powerful yep. for the users out there. Uh, thanks for sharing these, these are fantastic insights. Uh, kind of also curious to know a little bit about any use cases. Uh, any use cases that come to your mind, uh, you don't have to take names of companies, but maybe if you can share something with our audience. Yeah, so there's uh, a lot of use cases that are really interesting where uh, people bring come into play that usually or traditionally don't use data and databases. For instance, legal domain or healthcare yes, domain, yes. which sit on a top lot of unstructured documents, like lots of PDF documents from cases and so on. And now with both the LLM as a data extraction mechanism plus the knowledge graph with agents as a uh, data access mechanism. Yep. Because many people in these domains are also not technical, right? So you want to give them a natural language interface. Exactly. And so that's something we have a number of startups that use uh, Neo4j from a, from a legal perspective. And uh, another one is biotech and healthcare. Uh, so basically, which basically is, if you have research uh, uh, articles, uh, documents for the large, so Neo4j uh, basically has the largest healthcare uh, providers and, and biotech companies as customers. They have a lot of this kind of information and, yep. then bring, and they have already existing knowledge graphs and they use this information to enrich their knowledge graphs, but then use agents and MCP to actually integrate this knowledge graph into lots of different processes that they have running as such. Love so it. these were two examples, there are many more, supply chain yeah, and others yeah. as well. No, it uh, really but this helps. was actually some two actually that are always close to my heart. And That's awesome. Yeah, uh, exactly. When we talk about, you know, obviously uh, different industries, like you said, there are not so technical folks as well, and they would want it to be as easy as possible that they can extract data, the unstructured data, yeah. and this will definitely make their job easier as well and faster too. Um, next, and talking a little bit more about the future. How do you see the future with all the announcements, all the investments that y'all are making, yeah. and you know how agents are gonna be working? Kind of curious to know a little bit more about that. And maybe even when I talk about future, it could be around maybe six to 12 months. How yeah. do you see that? Exactly, so as you already mentioned, this investment unlocks a lot of possibilities, right? So both on the engineering side, growing the engineering teams, uh, being able to do more, building out this graph intelligence platforms. We talked about two building blocks now, but there are many more as, as we talked about. Yep. Uh, unstructured uh, data to knowledge graph, the things about memory agent brain uh, are really interesting as well. Right. We want to also see how can we integrate the graph intelligence platform better into white coding environments as well. Exactly. And then also see kind of how can we bring this all together into a even observability, if you look at conversations, so true. they also form graphs in a way, right? So can we pull this all together into a, into a platform? And all these building blocks need to be built, of course, and so that's what we're currently working on. Our next big project is the unstructured data in ingestion that we want to hopefully uh, make available early next year. 
uh, as, an, uh, as an early access so that people can basically inside of the platform just drop their documents, get a knowledge graph out on the other side, and then basically use the agent immediately to get value from it. Okay. And These yeah, so and we want to encourage everyone basically to try these things out and this capability and capacity will also allow us to serve many more users and customers from that perspective. I love it. Uh, uh, Michael, thanks for sharing this. Uh, future looks bright and amazing. Uh, one last question for you. Yeah. Uh, if folks want to learn more about all the announcements that you all have been making and also if they want to reach out to you and your team, where yeah. can they do that? Is LinkedIn the best place? Yeah, so people can reach out to me uh, on LinkedIn, of course. Nice. So that's the best place uh, to, to reach me. Um, otherwise, we have um, Graph Academy, which is our uh, integrated learning platform that we built on top of Neo4j ourselves. So yep. our DevRel team has done an amazing job. We have a lot of uh, LLM, AI, uh, agent content there already. Nice. And for the announcements from today, we have a number of blog posts, which also are super technical, basically go deep into how do you do this for yourself with repositories and code that you can apply yourself. So you can basically get, get up and running in a few minutes and we would love your feedback. So if anyone is using that, if you can provide feedback to us on how we can make it better, the experience, but also the capabilities, we would love to know that. And please reach out. And uh, there's a number of ways of doing that. And that awesome. Okay. This is great, uh, Michael. Uh, such a pleasure. We'll keep the conversation going. Have a Definitely. fantastic Graph Summit, yeah, uh, you London. Too. Enjoy the day. And yes. I'm super excited that you're here. Thank you. Thanks. Michael, thanks a lot. Such a pleasure chatting. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Yeah, take care.